In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create destruction effects like what you see on the screen right now. It should be rather easy to follow, but I recommend that you get some general knowledge and experience in Blender before you dive headfirst into this one. Let's not waste any more time and go straight into the tutorial. We are going to fracture our ground plane, simulate the destruction, add some particles for extra detail, and then finally tie it all together with some simulated smoke elements. Then all we need to do is texture our scene and put it all together. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is use the default cube, scale it down and uh, shape it to our ground plane. Now this is gonna be the dirt layer under the asphalt robe, so just add in an armature to reference the scale so that the scale is correct when we simulate. And the way we're gonna achieve the shatter effect is we're gonna use cell fracture, but to drive the fracture we're gonna add in a particle system and set the number to 200 and we also want to change the source to volume and random to have the particles randomly scattered across the volume of the cube then we can go ahead and hit the objects tab and quick effects and select cell fracture and turn the source limit to zero and then hit fracture and after a while you will see that Blender has created uh, loads of uh, shards from the object that we selected. Now these will be the, the, the sort of pieces of dirt that, gonna, that are gonna fly away when we simulate them. Okay, so next we're adding in another cube and just uh, going into edit mode and shaping it to, uh, to contain all of the pieces. So this will be a collision object that will keep the pieces from just falling straight down when we hit simulate. All right, and when we're happy with that, we can add a rigid body modifier and set to passive because this object isn't gonna move. We can hide it and select all of our pieces. Go under object tab, select rigid body and add active. This will add an active rigid body modifier to all of our selected pieces. And uh, don't forget to set the collision of the uh, container object to mesh. Now we want to make the uh, pieces look a bit more like, uh, like blocks of dirt. So what we're going to do is uh, remesh them to give them a rounder shape and hit Ctrl L to copy the modifiers over to all of the objects. This will take a while but as you can see we get something that looks a bit more natural. And apply visual geometry to mesh. Okay so that looks good but we want to make the pieces look a bit more random. So we're going to select them all and add another modifier this time a displacement modifier that we're gonna drive with a cloud texture and then just uh, play around with the size of the texture until you get something that you think looks good and then lower the strength and as you can see when we then copy hit ctrl l to copy the modifier over to all of the pieces we get something that looks a bit more like a layer of dirt and we can tweak the size of the texture to our liking afterwards. And this looks good, but the displacement may be a problem when we simulate. So what we want to do is head to the physics tab and change the source from deform to base. Right click and select copy to selected. But if we would simulate right now, the pieces would just fall apart and not stick together at all. We want them to stick together until they until they get broken apart, so we get the effect that they crumble under a certain amount of stress. To do that, we go to rigid body and then select connect. This will add constraints between all of the selected objects, but we want to go right here and change the connection pattern from selected to active to chain by distance. Add in a sphere that will drive our destruction. Give it a rigid body modifier, but this time change it from dynamic to animated and move it back. Hit I to give it a keyframe, keyframe the location and then move it and give it another keyframe. Then while hovering over the keyframes, hit T and select linear to make the sphere move in a linear fashion. Hit spacebar to animate and you will see that the pieces do not break apart at all. They just stick together in big pieces and to fix that we select them all, go to their physics properties and check breakable and then right click and select copy to selected. This uh, threshold slider will decide how uh, 
fragile the object will be so we're gonna go with something like 15. If you want it to break apart easier you can just lower the threshold. If you want it to stick together more you can increase it. And so here you see me just playing around with the mass of the pieces and also the threshold of the constraints but I think I landed on something like two kilograms for the weight for the mass of the pieces and 15 for the threshold of the constraints. There are really no rules here, just go, go with what looks best. And then when you're happy with your simulation, press Object, Rigid Body and Bake to Keyframe. This will massively speed up our workflow and also let us copy the object multiple times, create a longer street without having to simulate more than one square of it. Alright, so now we're left with a bunch of keyframes and I think the movement is looking really good. So I'm gonna go right ahead and start with the texture. What you'll do is add a new material and then go to File, Append and find the, find the blend file that you downloaded from Polyhaven. Then you're gonna browse to the Materials tab and choose your material. And all we need to do now is hit Ctrl L, hit Materials to copy the materials over all of the pieces. Now we're gonna go into edit mode and unwrap all of these pieces so that the texture can be correctly mapped to the geometry. So just hit U and then select Smart UV Unwrap. And this is looking really good. So let's move on to the concrete. The process for shattering the concrete is exactly the same. But you, but you wanna make sure that you give the dirt box new rigid body properties. This time set them to animated so that they will move exactly the way they are keyframe but the concrete will be able to interact with them while they move. As you can see it's already looking pretty cool with the different layers going on. All you need to do now is pend your concrete material and add it just the way you did with the dirt. And we got something that looks like this. If you want to change the scale of the texture or just move it around, you can do that with the mapping node that comes with the material. Okay, so now we want to add another cube to give it some more randomness and the texture to blend in with the dirt blocks. We're going to add another displacement modifier. But this layer isn't going to move at all. This will be our sort of base layer that gets revealed when the destruction is taking place. So just go into edit mode and just bring it down to make a crater. Now we can see that we have something under the destruction that reveals itself when we hit play. One thing that really sells the effect is the small details. And we could simulate smaller pieces than this, but this would take way too long to simulate and it would also be harder to render. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use a particle system that will give us those small pieces of rubble and stones. So what we'll do is we're gonna add a couple of icospheres that we will uh, displace with a displacement modifier. Just use the clouds texture and scale it down until you get something that looks a bit random. Then give them the same texture that you used for the dirt and asphalt. Then go into UV editing mode and just scale down the UV maps to to make their, their details a bit bigger because these pieces are going to be really small in the render. Then we're going to make a new collection and call it Debris. And we're going to put these three icospheres into this collection. This will allow us to use this collection for our particle system. So just add in a sphere, scale it down a bit and uh, apply the scale and then add a particle system. Change the normal velocity and also the random velocity to give it a bit more randomness. And then here we, under render we select collection and then uh, pick the collection that we just made with all our rubble. And also I forgot to remove the actual uh, particle system object from this collection but uh, here we go now you can see these particles get rendered as our small rubble pieces and all we really have to do now is give them a bit of angular velocity so check the dynamic tab and then give them a bit of velocity and now that we have all the elements we need for the final scene we're gonna actually start to build out the scene 
So just parent all our shattered objects to an empty and then copy it and move it one step to the left or right. And then because we have baked the simulation to keyframes, all we really need to do to make these two match up and seem like one big simulation is grab all the keyframes and just move them forward a little bit until we see that the animation matches up. This will give the illusion that we actually simulated more than we did and we can copy this how many times we want. I think I went three times, maybe two, uh, maybe four, but we'll see in the final product. And now we want this particle system that we made to animate with the destruction so it leaves a trail of debris as it simulates. So just move it to a starting position, hit I to give it a keyframe and keyframe the location. And then move forward a bit in the, in the timeline and hit I again and give it another keyframe. Now remember to hover over the keyframes in this, uh, in this part right here and hit T and then select linear so it moves in a linear fashion, just like our shattering object. And to bake the particle simulation, we're just gonna hit bake under the cache tab. Now to make some smoke puffs, we're gonna open up a new blender project and then create an icosphere. Now this is going to be the fuel for our, our smoke simulation. We're going to use particles as well. So add a new particle system for this guy and set the end frame to 1 so they just spawn all the particles at once. And then increase the velocity a lot because this is going to be an explosive uh, uh, movement of the smoke. And then give it some randomness as well. And I actually lowered the number to just 100. I, I find that it works just as well. So you can see we have something, uh, some random fuel for our smoke simulation right here. Then go to the object tab, hit quick effects and then quick smoke. This will give us a new smoke domain object that is going to contain all of our smoke. So just scale it up to a reasonable size and then move it so that the bottom of the domain matches with the bottom of the flow object. Then we want to change the flow source from mesh to particle system. So just go into here and under flow source, change it to our particle system that we just made. And if we hit play, we can see that we have some smoke going in. And all we really need to do now is try to shape the smoke puff to our liking with some different kinds of force fields. So I'm using a normal force field and just keyframing the influence of it. I'm also going to use a turbulence force field to give it a bit more randomness and also a wind force to push it in the direction of the destruction. But once we have something that we're happy with, we can increase the resolution to 64 and then hit bake. And once that's done, we can enable the noise for some extra detail. And later you will be able to find this simulation in this output folder that you select right here. So just bake it and once that's done we can head back to the original blend file where we have all of our destruction and import a new VDB object. Head to the folder where you exported it, select all the frames and you will be presented with this already simulated smoke puff. Increase the density a bit so that it will be more visible in the render and then move it to where you like it. Shift D to duplicate it and move it to another place where we need some smoke. Then hit this 2 button. This is gonna make it so that when we change the start frame, this won't affect the first smoke puff. This way we can duplicate it multiple times and use the same smoke over and over again. We just move it around a little bit and maybe change the scale and rotate it. No one will notice. And once we have something that we think we're happy with, we're going to change the render mode to workbench, and then render out a test animation. And as you can see, everything looks smooth and amazing. I think it's time for a real render. So we're just going to give the smoke some materials, just a simple principal volume node and some gradient texture to the background. Give it some lights to illuminate it from above and a little bit from down below to give it that sharp edge. And then it's time to finally render and see what we got.
I want to thank you so much for watching this entire video and if you have any questions or things that you want me to explain further don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will try to answer it as soon as possible. If you want to see more stuff like this or just want to be a kind soul and support the channel please consider subscribing. I'm also planning on making a full course on using free software for professional VFX so if you have any feedback on this format or just the way I teach I would love to see some criticism down below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.